Good morning, everybody. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from Delhi in a rundown to the Indian Army Day, which is going to be on the 15th of January. And this is our first interview for the special Army Day section ADU has. And we have with us this morning somebody who's been a part of the system for so long, quits the service and hang, hung his uniform as a major general. And, you know, the most important factor for the gentleman we are going to talk to is that he has the fact that everybody requires medical help. And he was at the helm of affairs trying to organize it for the Indian Army. And good morning, sir. We here have with us Mayor General Ashok Kumar, who is the, at the moment one of the most prolific writers. And uh, you will find, find him a very familiar face on the television. And also that he headed the ex-servicemen's contributory health scheme which is more commonly and very fondly known to us as ECHS. So welcome, sir, to ADU's chat room. Uh, thank you, ma'am. And uh, wish you a very happy new year to you and your entire team. And uh, it will be very interesting for me to you know share my thoughts about uh, ECHS, with which I was very passionately involved. Thank you very much, sir. And we hope the new year and the year 2023 gets the best for you and your family too, sir. And now beginning with this, we also want it to be a very nice, healthy year for our men in the Indian Army. And sir, what is ECHS all about? What does it give to them? Uh, actually, uh, ECHS is addressing the health care of uh, entire veteran community as well as their dependents. Uh, currently, close to 55 lakh members are there in ECHS. And this is the largest and widest spread healthcare scheme of the central government uh, at the moment. And it is not only in India, but it is also having its uh, footprints in Nepal because there's a large number of Gurkha soldiers also part of army. So this health scheme also covers them and their dependents on the equal footing as well. Uh, you'll be also aware, ma'am, in the life of a veteran, uh, health care actually becomes the second most important thing. Of course, the first uh, award goes to the pensionary benefits. After pension, this becomes very, very you know important. And in today's time, there are certain uh, uh, very important developments, uh, number of you know, societal changes, uh, families getting more nuclearized, the, the uh, average lifespan increasing, uh, nature of ailments also increasing, and in uh, increasing cost of treatment also adding you know, uh, fuel to the fire. Now, in all this, healthcare becomes so much important that, you know, it cannot be quantified in words. More so, uh, it is uh, uh, affecting the uh, those people who are settled in the rural areas or in semi-urban areas. Because in metro areas or in those areas where there are military stations, there is some kind of, you know, response mechanism is still okay. But in the rest of the country, there are serious challenges which got more manifested during COVID times. You would have yourself experienced the personal level, number of known people and acquaintances, you know, try to run around. But, you know, the support which was expected either from the ECHS uh, support system in form of impanel hospitals or to the service hospitals also, there was a lot of issue. So I think this is uh, one of the most important healthcare schemes and it has the huge potential of, you know, uh, taking care of our men and their dependents in a big way. Yes, sir, absolutely. And I think, you know, with both of us being uh, you a veteran and I a veteran's wife, I feel that, yes, it is something which really is a boon and a real benefit to the soldier. But one thing, sir, which I always feel uh, when I stand at the ECHS and uh, I belong to the city, so I'm a localite. But I find, you know, that people, uh, you know, they're coming, the soldier is coming from where he settled in the rural areas. Somebody, when you go to the ECHS in Noida, you'll find people from, you know, Western UP, Haryana, this, you know, the bordering sides and uh, of complete Delhi. And uh, except for the Gurgaon side, where you do have your, uh, you know, ECHS panel and panel hospitals and clinics there, 
but uh, the surprise item is that the actual rural and the actual hinterland of india uh, has to send its soldiers to the big cities so why is that so uh ma'am if you really see the healthcare development not only for the defense forces but in the civil domain as well has been largely concentrated in the metro cities all over india it is not equally distributed uh, network where the healthcare even by the civil population can be accessed in the smaller towns there is a large quantum of you know uh, gravitation of population towards these uh, special facilities like if you talk of aims delhi people from each and every nook and corner even from civic street come to delhi government is in the process of opening more aims and in due course of time the medical infrastructure is now you know going beyond metro cities but that all that will take time and uh, the the current uh, fabric of the echs that also requires a major reset why that major reset because the background as to why echs uh, came about that needs to be understood i will not take you to the uh, historical background too far because you know uh, that may not be relevant at this point of time but when finally it got approved uh, by the order of supreme court at that point of time the basic approach was that the service hospitals or the service facilities are not able to take care of the medical need of the serving persons and their dependents firstly more military stations have come more organizations have come more families whether in the service quarters or in the uh, civil quarters have started staying with their you know husbands and therefore they are also dependent on the service facilities and therefore the existing service facilities were not able to cope up to the need of serving as well as retire uh, you know personal uh, health care needs so it was thought okay let's go to the civic street if there are certain good hospitals they can be impaneled for you know basic uh, medicare the polyclinics pre opened so that the overflow the the word i am repeating the overflow you know could be handled uh, by those support system the echs was never conceived and implemented and empowered to take care of the health care needs of the veterans and their dependents by itself it was to be an adjunct of the uh, serving healthcare facilities wherein the shortfall can be addressed by that but this with time getting progress the space has got segmented and the large number of people in the serving fraternity both in the medical setup and outside who, who feel that echs must take care of the healthcare need of the veterans and their dependents by itself it cannot because neither it has been conceived now it has been structured now it has got the wherewithal so what it has it has actually got the basic polyclinics with you no know, normal doctors and some medical specialists and things like that and thereafter the balance support has to come from the impaneled hospitals even the quality impaneled hospitals are not there in you know uh, most of the stations even in a place where i am speaking from now in lucknow the quality hospitals are not getting impaneled despite they being present there are more reasons to that which we can you know talk later so uh, the the first major reset has to be uh, done by looking at the health care of serving persons and their dependents as well as the veterans and their dependents as a integrated health care facility i will explain that with example also let's say suppose there is a serving soldier in meerut there is mh in meerut but suppose he has got a cardiac need which requires surgery now mh meerut is not equipped with that kind of you know support getting extended so what does you know uh, the option left with the individual he has to either be uh, sent to the uh, hospital in delhi or to lucknow or to bareilly you know if uh, it is within that uh, mh bareilly but mh bareilly also doesn't have you know major facilities than what is there in mh meerut in the process that individual is you know suffering medically he is going to be out for you know larger duration of you know his service and the entire family somebody has to go and look after him outside you know uh, his you know posting station so he is suffering and there are large number of the uh, families of serving persons more than 10 lakhs really speaking uh, who are settled in non military stations they in any case don't have the support of the medical facilities so serving people are also suffering in that way now you take the veterans case a veteran he may be you know uh, having uh, 
his uh, native place let's say in a district in pratapgarh jaunpur a number of you know you take any district in up uh, leaving aside uh, lucknow and uh, kanpur uh, you will find then he has to rush to the you know major cities for his medical treatment and if the integrated approach is adopted in that what will happen that the medical facility whether it is a service medical facility or an impanel hospital both can be made used by both the segments the guy who requires a serving soldier in merit for his you know cardio treatment there are you know uh, very good hospitals of cardio in uh, merit city he can be you know utilizing you know that facility is impanel and get the treatment locally similarly the person who is uh, the veteran community if there is a service hospital he should get you know all the support which has there the distinction between the serving people and veteran from the health care perspective in peace time you know we can have a different norms during the war time but in peace time has to vanish and the only criteria of the treatment should be the medical preference that a person needing the medical treatment first he or she should be accorded priority vis-a-vis -vis, you know whether he is veteran or you know serving community so the entire resetting you know has to be done only then probably we will be able to address uh, these problems and also uh, statistically speaking you know close to 80% ailments are handled by the normal uh, medical officer at the end of uh, polyclinics if you see the number of patients who are coming for you know viral fever you know minor uh, ailments and also the the last number of the lifestyle uh, patients who require the medicines on a regular basis all those people constitute close to 80% of you know uh, the, the total load so there is a need of getting echs polyclinic in each and every district of the country currently we have close to uh, 433 uh, polyclinics including six in nepal numbers maybe little uh, one to two here and there because that was the figure when i left echs in 2019 but largely uh, it is going to be the you know uh, similar number uh, it is you know covering 49% of districts so more than 50% of districts in india are still uncovered where our uh, persons are staying and since we have made echs a mandatory healthcare scheme from 1st april 2003 it is therefore incumbent uh, on us to provide this facility wherever the individual has been settled invariably you know people look it at uh, from the expenditure uh, perspective uh, i think uh, which is not a right approach uh, because there are ways and means how the uh, financial viability of a polyclinic even if the footfall is low can be addressed and you know uh, my phd actually was on this particular subject uh, on the healthcare of veterans wherein there are a lot of good practices of usa and uk which are suitable for indian conditions you know which can be adopted i will give you one example of you know uh, the uh, uk uh, system uh, which can actually transform the way we are handling and that is in addition to the impanelment of hospitals and clinics they impanel individual doctors also now if we adopt that system just imagine if in a far off district there is a you know uh, doctor who is in panel who is you know fees are fixed 100 rupees uh, per reference the individual goes there and gets into he uh, is basic uh, medicine and then everything gets he doesn't have to travel all the way you know spend his whole day the, the medical facility has to reach to the door step of veterans and their dependents planners at all levels have to be realizing that the age itself is a you know life challenge there are a lot of adversities which happen in families which we can realize only if we ourselves are undergoing so the 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 uh, hierarchy has to take the healthcare at the door step and each and every attendant problem can be resolved and it can be really made vibrant So you know, before we continue, I'd like to tell our audiences that all this which is coming right from the horse's mouth. Well, you know, uh, audiences, and you should all know uh, that the person we are interviewing today has been the managing director of ECHS, and uh, because uh, of that, and he mentioned that there's a PhD. So, friends, we have it coming right from the horse's mouth. Right, so we continue, and uh, now tell me one thing, sir. Uh, I Uh, agree with what you are saying here that we need to improve the network 
now uh, there are places where there are states in india where the, the you know number of ex service men is huge uh, so let's say punjab uttar pradesh you know you've got a huge number of ex service men there are uh, states where you have very few uh, ex service men now uh, when one is planning at a planning level when one is planning to set up a polyclinic uh could there also be a thing like uh, you know northeast having for four states one polyclinic and everybody running to that one polyclinic or uh, when it's being made do you decide that only, even if there is one veteran we make it for him uh ma'am you know that is that is a very very you know pertinent question and invariably uh, when the scheme came up they came out with some criteria that you know how many people are required in a particular district to open a polyclinic and what kind of dependency should be there based on that they classified type a b c d e kind of polyclinics but you know uh, i am more inclined you know which has come to my research and my analysis the the polyclinic has to be there in each and every part of the country number of dependents of the serving or the you know veteran community that is you know uh, not that important now there will be certain places you know i have done the uh, census of the ex service men in the entire country because i had sent a proposal to expand the network you know i am not aware what happened to the that proposal except that 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 is not implemented as it because the government would have had it its own challenges and own approach but the issue is that Uh, how we can make it viable uh, i will not recommend that if you are incurring a cost of let's say 1 lakh and there is only one person to treatment and still you know you should go for that but rather than opting you know not going in for that polyclinic you should look at as to how you can make that polyclinic economically more viable and i will suggest how that can be done we have the exact data of number of ex service men and their dependents whether it is from army navy and air force you know residing in each and every district reasonably authentically once we add the dependents of serving persons the numbers you no know, further go up and i as i told you uh, we have to have integrated approach because you know more than 10 lakhs of dependents of serving persons who are stationed in non military stations they are actually deprived largely of the medical healthcare despite being officially you know entitled those who are staying together and having a medical support they are you no know, reasonably well looked after so once we add that you know it further increases now because of the uh, court order uh, sam rifle persons have already been uh, given the uh, facility of echs so you know that will further expand the network and still if the dependencies are low there is nothing wrong uh, having taken care of these people who are the actual beneficiaries of the echs system in a prioritized manner the balanced capacities be made available to the central government state government corporations and i will say mm -hmm. even to the normal public and for which a kind of a nominal payment could be taken from that and the treatment could be given ultimately health care is a most important aspect of social security and sooner or later the whole country has to embrace it so in case we take these polyclinics in every nook and corner of the country and uh, you know adopt this method of making this economically viable this will be you know creating a very good uh, framework for subsequent you know social security as and when the nation decides to uh, provide like you know in uh, uk the healthcare is free of course the available facilities and the uh, service provider there is a you know a gap so there is a waiting time so we can you know look after uh, or you know adopt a model which is more suited to the indian conditions and indian needs so while at least one echs polyclinic must be there but where that there is a larger population of the ex service men settle which is now a trend like if you see the entire uttarakhand the polyclinics uh, north of dehradun you know in kanpriyag in joshi mart in you know other places there are hardly any you know football because people have either migrated to dehradun or they migrated to noida and delhi ncr so this you know migration is also taking place so we have to look at how these you know uh, potent uh, options can also add to the national security if you have a good healthcare model existing even in far off places on a district basis and take alternative means to making the economically viable 
then you know a lot of things you know uh, get changed because besides providing the health care uh and sir there's one very major uh, you know crib which we hear always is that echs is always short of medicines now what is this why is it so uh, i will tell you ma'am uh, this is a serious problem uh, but there are methods uh, by which it can be just you know uh, resolved in a single line direction by the government currently you know you, uh, people are dependent on a echs polyclinic you know everybody is dependent on something or the other and the people who are uh, migratory either they can change to the polyclinic or you know they can take the medicines for you know say about 7 uh, days you know they are not allowed to take for 30 days or more because the polyclinic uh, demands medicines based on their anticipated load and the type of medicines needed but man you'll be surprised the way we are you know uh, handling these medicines if there is a you know base hospital r and r there are medicines which are you know coming from echs head there are medicines which are coming from the service hospitals in the wards they do not have any means to distinguish you know between which medicine is being given to uh, you know whom and ultimately whether the money is coming for the serving persons through the dgfns or through the revenue budget of the you know concerned services are from the army actually it is a government money the the it is the government's responsibility which in any case it is you know uh, taking care of both for the serving person and their dependents as well as veterans and their dependents so firstly there should be a single head to take care of medicine there should be no duplicacy you will be shocked and surprised that you go to any hospital or any polyclinic a substantial effort and manpower is committed for that accounting itself so what we can do we can do the outsourcing of pharmacy the though uh, if you don't have medicine there is a authorized local chemist and some other you know uh, models which i got implemented during my time because it's what in cghs uh, since long but those are you know the the uh, the, the minor issues which have been you know taking care of the larger issues both service hospitals and echs should have a common head of pharmacy a common head of accounting and rather than they doing themselves they should outsource it to the agency and there are large number of agencies like you know uh, and then a, a pilot project was made through apollo pharmacy they established also the setup in hyderabad mh but you know finally the, the service uh, the djfms uh, and they had their some own reservation but now they are more inclined and they themselves are realizing that the medicine accounting and demand and it is as a huge issue once we go to the outsourcing model they will be able to provide the medicines and there will be no uh, shortage of any kind the rates can be also negotiated uh, it will be economical also the uh, medical personnel at the polyclinic end as well as in service hospitals will be more focused on their core job as far as the field areas and forward areas concern there you know the the serving community can have their own uh, current method of the uh stocking places and supply in the forward areas till the time the development reaches you know that forward so that kind of the hybrid mode can be done but majority of the pay stations and entirety in echs it must be on outsourced basis and it is not ma'am important where you know the uh, when the medicine is given even it is important then is it given when it is required so that is more you know critical and in elements i have personally come across large number of uh, you know serving personnel officers and even senior officers having uh, best of patients but the affordability in certain cases in case of cancer medicines and number of thing is you no know, far beyond your means the jcu and other ranks number of them have to sell their you know property house and this thing to take care of those you know uh, medicines at times and therefore uh, i think the medicinal need and it's timely need that has to be addressed structurally in this way and at the same time the people because in out of 80% people who are getting disposed at the polyclinic level once we have the individual doctors also in panel along with for the lifestyle diseases if the medicines can be delivered and sent at home you know that will uh, address a uh, lot of problem the the time has come when their medical support has to reach to the echs beneficiary rather than otherwise otherwise should be only in a critical cases where the referral and other things you know are required 
And sir, one thing I want to understand when we see it from both the sides, you have been someone who's been at the helm of affairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we try to see it from both the sides, sir, what is there in the impaneled hospitals for getting themselves attached to ECHS? Uh, Ma'am, that is a very, very important question because uh, if you see the impanel hospitals are given the rates or the payment based on CGHS rates and uh, CGHS rates are pretty low. In fact, in majority of the cases, you know, you can't dream of, you know, somebody is able to provide that facility uh, for you. But still, there is a lot of, you know, uh, rush uh in delhi ncr and in punjab in haryana uh, you know uh, in you know basically in a northern belt which in any case has got the larger population of the veteran community uh for the hospitals to, to get their impanel whereas we find the takers in the uh southern part of the country are not there because they do not uh become cost effective at the current rates so you know they are not that inclined so what these people do invariably firstly the uh, though the processes are you know codified the the, the costs are you know fixed but the uh, medicines you know which they are providing they are quoting at the mrp rates and uh, in mrp rate there is a huge margin even if you go to the normal chemist he provides you medicines and there are you know costly injections where the margins on mrp is close to 50 percent also so they are you know charging the patient at the MRP rate because the uh, implication for them, they cannot charge more than MRP. And if the medicine given is uh, found appropriate, then they, you know, billing cannot be questioned. And they also undertake certain processes which are not required. There are, you know, certain unfair practices where the, you know, hospitals are also involved and our veterans are also involved in some manner. So actually, uh, uh, that is the reason, you know, they try to glue up with the ECHS. Uh, Otherwise, uh, there is you know another you know related issue that the budget support uh, you know doesn't come in time. It is always a backlog which continues. Though finally it is a government's commitment, so the there is no hospital whose bill has finally not been cleared. But it takes time, you know. So at times to uh, because of these delay because they have to pay to their you know employees, staff, uh, run their establishments. If there are expenditures, so you know they also try to keep their margins high. And whatever be the rules and regulations, they try to exploit that optimally rather than doing it ethically. So there is a challenge, though the the uh, ECHS as well as the government is trying to uh, address uh, these shortfalls and unfair practices uh, by various methods. Uh, but it will be always a game of you know uh, those who are trying to do it and who who uh, are you know trying to prevent it. Ultimately, uh, our veterans have to display a very very uh, high ethical value. Uh, of not getting involved in these fair practices, they have to check their bills, you know, after the treatment, you know, the signature is to, supposed to be taken. They have to be sure that whatever is being shown that they have been given anything, everything. So once those precautions are taken, these, you know, pill freezes will reduce and the bill will also reduce in that case. And so one very, uh, very common, uh, you know, complaint of all these hospitals uh, is that, uh, you know, we send the bill in the month of December and our payments come in the month of May or June. Can something be done to expedite this process? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, you know, there were, you know, two facets to it. One was initially the uh, processing of, you know, bills uh, was manual. And uh, that used to take a lot of time. Even the in Delhi, the bills used to uh, come physically. Just imagine, you know, if uh, the bills are, you know, processed, the first stage is the regional center. Now, in entire Northeast, the regional center is at Guwahati. So, even in if there is a hospital in Manipur, if he has to, if he has treated an ex serviceman, so the bill has to physically come to uh, regional center Guwahati. So, you know, just imagine a person, you know, taking those bills, physically traveling, the expenditure involved, and then manually processing and these things. And in Delhi, and finally, uh, from regional center that used to go to the audit office in Delhi, you know, the truck loads, multiple truck loads used to go from Delhi to you know, Chandigarh. I succeeded in my time because I found this as a major you know, uh, impediment. So everything was uh, digitized. Now the person who is there in Manipur hospital from his own uh, terminal, he can you know, log the bill you know, uh, with the digital signature. It reaches uh, Guwahati and at every stage, 
it is getting digitally processed there is a no repeat no physical you know movement and we have saved you know crores and crores of rupees besides reducing the time span now i can say with you with a lot of confidence that there is no delay in processing the bills but there are challenges related to non availability of the budget in fact the digital uh, process allows uh, no uh, body having any option to uh, change the sequence also or taking somebody you know any favor now it is you know first in first out you know that is the digital you know uh, lock which has been put in the entire system uh, whether you know it is regional center central log echs or the people who are you know from uti who are doing the bills anywhere it is the first in first out so there is you know uh, no time it can be done in a half including the personal bills of the individuals but once the bill has passed and again the regional center has to make the payment then the money has to be there if the government does not provide the money naturally even if you are able to pass uh, process the bill in 5 days 10 days 15 days then again the you know waiting will continue till the time you get the budget allocation and that is something of course it you know improves uh, you know at times at times the budget is there Uh, so uh, you will find that in the month of you know when the budget is located in month of april may june the backlogs of hospitals individuals everything is cleared because the budget is used you know uh, available and bulk of this year but as you go subsequently in later half of this time and the initial budget gets uh, expanded and then there is a gap i think you know the the budget which is coming in the range of between 3000 to 4000 crores the need is you know somewhere uh, close to 5 to 1000 crore plus and if that budget is you know allocated ab initio i think this problem will you know uh, get addressed and this problem getting addressed in its wake will bring in tremendous amount of qualitative changes and in the mindset of the hospitals and elsewhere in delhi we had to have number of times like people used to go for treatment for medanta but the bills are pending and you know uh, he also knows that it is the, the government liability it will get paid but then you know if the uh, somebody is having you know few lakhs of you know uh, outstanding it is okay but once it runs in crores and crores then it becomes difficult for the hospital as well so i think uh, uh, there is a famous uh, saying uh, there was a poet known as ghag who said in hindi ka varsha jab krishi sukhane samay chuk puni ka pachtane there is no point of the rain when the you know the the crops have already dried down so the money is being given by the government in uh, ultimately government is liquidating all the liabilities but if it can you know allocate the budget well in time i am sure major problem related to the hospitals uh, difficulties individuals bills the medicine availability and you know majority of the issues will automatically get so- uh, sorted out even in the current system leave aside the improvement that in any case that we can bring in the you know uh, lot of changes and so my last question to you because a lovely note to close on so uh, my last question to you would be sir that uh, uh, the doctors in the echs now uh, we do have experts sitting there individual field experts sitting there but uh, as uh, echs beneficiaries many a times we felt that the experience of the doctors here in comparison to the experience of the doctors who are in parallel hospitals is definitely uh, you know lacking here in the echs polyclinics can something be done to get the right person to be sitting there so that we don't have to run to the you know fortuses and medantas of the world uh this is a very very important uh, facet uh, you have highlighted and uh, it is a harsh truth Uh, i think the people who are working in impanel hospitals uh, not all the doctors but fair number of them uh, you know are reasonably good because they have to perform to survive now that kind of approach is non existent uh, in the echs polyclinic medical offices they are already you know with the uh, kind of uh, majority of them are from service uh, background only and uh, they are all you know pension benefits and uh, they don't have also much incentive financially the, the payment which we are giving to them are you know actually uh, peanuts really speaking 
so uh, i will not say that you know if you have uh, you know peanuts to give you you will get only monkeys you know that will be you know unethical and incorrect but i think the uh, if we improve the uh, terms and conditions of the doctors whom we are employing in polyclinic especially the ones which have got high footballs and that that will be very very uh, beneficial and i am sure if we can pay a doctor well whether he is in an impanel hospital or in polyclinic he'll be more than happy to join and work uh, but in absence of that there is a challenge you know uh, really speaking and uh, uh, it can be compensated to a large extent where uh, the individual doctors those good doctors they are also practicing outside they are also in panel so as against going to the polyclinic you can go to them take a consultation because as i told you more than 80% cases are based on a basic minimal ailments or the uh, lifestyle needs so you know these can be done the payment has to be increased but since we are mandated to follow the cghs norms and cghs is also uh, paying whatever the cghs is paying that is being paid in ichs also so there there is a challenge you know and uh, i think once uh, a nucleus from the serving community in terms of one doctor one nursing assistant one pharmacist that kind of thing you know gets uh, as a nucleus of each polyclinic and rest contractual employees are built around that because everybody else is contractual you know he is not sure after 11 months whether he or she will be there or not so even there is a lot of ad hocism uh, so uh, we can make you know systematic changes to improve uh, but that will require the larger approach and the the you know more uh, forthright way and we have to you know uh, look out of box to make the scheme really uh, i mean what for the purpose it has been created thank you very much sir what a lovely conversation we had today and i'm sure the audiences will be very happy to listen to all this you know when it comes from uh, people like us the questions we want answers which are forthright and today sir you've given us wonderful answers very forthright and i'm sure you know all the points which came ahead and across to us i'm sure as and when the you know things progress and proceed uh, the uh, organization uh, which is a great asset to the veterans will become a bigger lucrative asset thank you very much sir for being on adu chat room uh, well wish you all and uh, at home and everywhere here we feel that 2023 should be good for the veteran community as far as health is concerned thank you ma'am wishing you all the best thank you right. thank you so much sir